There is no doubt about it, if there is a luxury watch company you've never heard of, it's Richard Miele. The company, which was founded in 2001, is a serious player in the luxury watch market. But who is Richard Miele, and how did he transform the company into what it is today? Richard Miele was born in 1951 in the French province of Lorraine. The province region of France, in particular, is still known for housing many of the world's rich and famous, and Miele appears to have grown in close proximity to them. This is where we regret that more detailed information about his childhood is difficult to come by. It is unknown where he attended primary and secondary school or what his parents were like. What is known about him is that he would enroll at Comptoir, a technical affiliate of the University of France. It's unclear whether this was the strange reason he started working as an export manager for the French watchmaker Finn Hall after graduating in 1974. It was a small company, and it was quickly acquired by Matcha, a larger jewelry company that moved on to the fashionable jewelry business, leaving Mabu Song in charge of the timepiece branch. Several years later, his feet were still itching, they wanted to create something unique and different, not be limited by what he was already working with. It would take a long time, however, and he was finally able to take a risk and start his own company in 1999, but the first timepiece would not be released for another two years. During these years, Richard Miele met Grill Pappy, one of the current generation's most outstanding watchmakers and director of research and development at Odome Pages. High-end watchmaking branch, and ended up helping him design and create some of Mill's own first offerings. Audemars Pig also joined the project as a minority shareholder. Since the beginning, Renault Pepe has been the technical partner for the most complicated movements in the Richard Mill collection, like the tourbillon and split-second chronograph. For those who are unfamiliar, a tourbillon is a mechanical complication found in some high-end watches. Mechanical movements of timepieces even on basic mechanical watches, the structure that governs timekeeping can be seen vibrating consonantly through display case backs. The first timepiece was anything but simple, the Richard Miele RM01 was a tourbillon model, one of the most prestigious achievements in watchmaking. There were only 17 made, and it was marketed as a wrist-mounted racing machine. The tourbillon movement was on display for all to see in an intriguingly curved and non-shaped case. It was the only one of its kind because it was made with ergonomic architecture and the latest technological breakthroughs. This story also marked the beginning of a long association with the glittering world of A-listers, which ranged from athletes to Hollywood stars. It was named after Felipe Massa, a Brazilian Formula One driver who wore it during races and miraculously survived a terrible crash at the 2004 Canadian Grand Prix. The RM006 was the first timepiece for the carbon fiber base plate, carbon fiber changed the aviation and automotive industries due to its unique properties. When exposed to temperature changes, it is strong, stiff, lightweight, and highly resistant to contraction and expansion. This model needed a black base plate, so its dark appearance was a big plus. But because it was hard to cuff and drill with the precision needed for watchmaking, it was very hard and expensive to make a base plate like this. When the RM007 debuted in 2005, it was the brand's first ladies watch, and the company went on to produce special pieces for actress Natalie Portman. Michel Yeoh stated that the nautical-themed RM014, designed in collaboration with Luxury Sailing and stored at Perini Navi, would be followed by numerous collaborations with athletes and entertainers. The RM012, a tubular tourbillon with a minimalist form and significant manufacturing complexity, was released in 2006, with tennis player Rafael Nadal and actor Jackie Chan among those who wore it. This platinum watch was made in a limited run of 30 pieces with the goal of replacing the traditional idea of a plate with wheels with tubes to make a reliable and efficient three-dimensional architectural ensemble. Not only did the brand impress celebrities,
but it was also very light and aerodynamic. It didn't take long to win the top prize, as it joined the Foundation de l'Art en Audrey in 2007 and won the Golden Hand Award at the Grand Prix the same year. This is the watchmaking equivalent of an Oscar. The success of the brand would eventually allow Richard Mill to open a second factory. Since it opened in April 2013, the ultra-modern Pro Art Factory has been making Richard Miller watch cases and other parts out of precious metals like titanium and composites like base plates and pushers. Since then, Richard Miller has continued to push the limits of invention by using unusual and sometimes never-before-seen materials and new ways to make things. The Torbion RM2700 and 2 exemplifies the never-ending pursuit of new challenges. At Roland Garros during the 2015 French Open, Rafael Nadal used it for the first time. This watch had the first skeletonized unibody base plate. The case band and the base plate were made into one piece, so they didn't have to be taken apart. A solution that demanded extensive knowledge and experience in micromachining novel materials this structure, which draws inspiration from race car chassis, significantly enhances rigidity and impact resistance McLaren F1 RM5003. At the start of 2017, a masterpiece made by the famous McLaren Formula One team and the function set a new record as the lightest mechanical chronograph ever made. With a strap, the RM5003, which combines a tourbillon and a split-second chronograph, weighs less than 40 grams. After five years of work, Richard Miller released the RM6501 automated split-seconds chronograph and automatic split-seconds chronograph, which is the most complicated watch you can see in the Richard Miller factories until the end of 2020. This model is driven by a high-frequency balance with variable inertia that thumps at a rate of 5 Hz. This makes sure that stopwatch calculations are accurate to one-tenth of a second. The most recent model available is the RM6501. In Morgan Stanley's annual assessment of the Swiss watch industry in 2020, Richard Miele rose from 8th to 7th place. The research writers ranked it 10th in 2018 with annual revenue estimated at 840 million US dollars. The six corporations ahead of Millis, on the other hand, all have one thing in common, they are all 163 years old on average. Miller aimed at the upper crust have paid off, with $840 million earned from the sale of only 4,300 watches in a year at an average retail price of $195,000, which ranked third among the top 50 in the report. Brands were expected to earn $1.73 billion US in 2020, based on the sale of 490,000 watches at an average selling price of $4,675. They also stood up to the traditional distribution model. Miele's method costs more to use, but it guarantees that the brand gets all of the money it earns. According to the report, Richard Miele has amassed a 2.5% market share of a centuries-old business in just over two decades. Which may not seem like much until you consider that it is a tenth of the market share held by the industry's largest player, Rolex, and is steadily increasing. Richard Miele watches typically cost around €150,000, putting them right in the middle of Patek Philippe, Arlanga, and Zona territory, but what is it about these timepieces that makes them so expensive? One kilogram of titanium, a rare metal. According to Theodore Deal, the brand's press officer and one of its first employees, the Torx screws that adorn the bezels of the timepieces alone cost roughly 2 million Swiss francs, which is roughly the same in US dollars. Lastly, this go the extra mile mentality runs through all watches and parts like a thread, which adds huge costs. Then there's the fine art of high-end watchmaking, which is frequently overlooked as a result of the aforementioned relationship with Audemars Piguet and Renault Pepe. Which of the following facts was your favorite in this video? Let us know in the comments. Also, 
Don't forget to turn on the notification bell and subscribe for more.